Hi there, in today's video you will see how important it is to set the right Q&A during your approach and what could be the catastrophic consequences if you set the wrong Q&A. This is called Q&A blunder error. At the end of the video we will see how the crew of the Norwegian Air Sweden from Stockholm to Paris Charles de Gaulle end up having the right information in the flight deck. No wrong indications, no apparent mistakes were done, however they end up starting a go around and clear the terrain just 1.8 meters from a possible crash. How could this happen if they didn't have any wrong information in the flight deck? So without further ado, let's dive right into it. V1, rotate. Before talking about why it is so important to set the right q &A, we need first of all to review very quickly why do we use the q &A. We use q &A because we use the altimeter in order to keep the separation from the obstacles and the other traffic. So if you know that you have an obstacle in front of you, a terrain, a mountain in front of you that is 4,000 feet for example, you want to know if you're gonna fly above it at the same level or below. And how do you do that? By looking at your altimeter. And the altimeter needs a reference in order to calculate the difference in feet, the vertical difference between your aircraft and the mean sea level. Why the mean sea level? Is because the top of the terrain that you can see on your charts are from the top of the terrain down to the mean sea level and also the other traffics that are flying altitude are using the mean sea level as a reference. How can you fly altitude and guarantee the separation between the obstacles around you and the other traffic is to use the QNH as a pressure reference. So the QNH is the pressure reference at the mean sea level. And if you set this pressure reference on your altimeter, you will read the altitudes in that specific area. The problem here is that the altimeter doesn't really know, the altimeter trusts your actions completely, doesn't know if you set the wrong reference, the wrong pressure reference. So if one day you have a QNH, the pressure at the mean sea level is 1000 hectopascal, however you by mistake you set 1010 hectopascal, so 10 hectopascal of difference, you will use a different reference. However, the Altimeter will just tell you what is the difference in feet from the pressure reference that you set and your aircraft. So if one day the pressure reference, the QNH is 1000, however you set 1010, you will see that the aircraft will display, for example, 5000 feet. However, that's your indicated altitude and your true altitude is going to be roughly 4700. So as you can see, the problem here is the pilot think that is flying at 5,000 feet, however its true altitude is 4,700 feet. You can say, yeah, that's not a big deal because by looking outside I know if I, I'm above a mountain. Yes, that's true. However, let me ask you a question. What will happen if you're flying to IMC so you don't have any visual reference and you're flying just basing all the information by looking inside the instrument? So you want to make sure that you use the right pressure reference when you fly low, when you fly altitudes, okay? So and the problem with that is by flying IFR, following the IFR rules, okay, the glide drop, when you're flying an ELS, the glide drop doesn't care about your QNH because once you intercept the glide drop, you start the descent for the ILS, okay, and that's a fixed descent angle, it's a fixed descent path. So you enter into the glide drop and you follow a fixed descent path. So what happens is that even though you set the QNH, the wrong QNH, but you are in the glide drop, you will be separated by the obstacles be below you. The problem with that is if you are flying a non-precision approach and you are in IMC conditions, because the non-precision approach you need to base your vertical paths by looking at the altimeters and do the cross check between the distances and the altitude, okay? So all the procedure, all the non-precision approach have a distance versus altitude checks the pilots do. Now let's see what could be the threat of setting the wrong q &H, Okay, as we said, if you set the wrong q &H inside the flight deck, you don't really know because you just read the altitude, you think you're flying at that specific altitude. However, your true altitude is different, but you don't know about this error until the radio altimeter, the EGPWS of your aircraft will start to give you some signs, okay? There is a call 
that the uh, EGPWS does to alert the pilot that the terrain is 2,500 feet below the aircraft. And when the radio altimeter feels a terrain below the aircraft of 2,500 feet or lower, we'll start to say 2,500. 2,500. Why it is important to monitor the EGPWS callouts is because they are based on radio altimeter and the radio altimeter doesn't care about your QNH because they are waves that touch the ground and come back and it calculates by the time traveled by the waves the difference in feet. So this is a real height from the ground. The first sign that the pilot has and alerts the pilot that maybe the QNH was wrong is by having these callouts from the EGPWS a bit early, so you expect 2,500 feet call around 7 miles of final, 8 miles of final, however you received this call 12 miles of final. So if the pal received this call before the time he, is, he expects the call or she expects the call, that's the first sign that you should cross check what is the problem there, okay, and make sure that you challenge the controller asking the QNH. Then if you miss that 2500 feet call by the GPWS, the other sign if you're flying a non-precision approach in the MC, you're gonna have terrain, cautionary terrain warning on short final because you think you are in the right spot but you are at that altitude but you are far away from the run. Terrain, terrain, terrain. So guys, it's paramount to understand that this is a mistake that is easy to identify if you have VMC condition, cover OK, because you just look outside, let's say you are flying a non-precision approach, you set the wrong QNH, your indicated altitude is correct, however, you look outside, you see four reds on the puppy light. That's very easy to spot when there is a good visibility, so you correct your path, your land, or you perform a go-round. But the big problem, guys, is when you fly non-precision approach, because as we said, the glide slope doesn't care about the QNH, and you are flying a non-precision approach in IMC condition. In that case, you really want to make sure that the QNH is the right one. So now let's see what you can do in order to mitigate the QNH blunder error, in order to mitigate this threat. The first thing that some companies do is to ask the pilot to set your destination QNH whenever you're doing the pre-flight. So you are on the ground at your departure station and you're setting already the QNH of your destination as a cross-check. So once you get to your destination, you can do a cross-check between the QNH that you receive on the 80s and the QNH that you preset at the departure. Okay, this is already a cross-check. So if they are similar, you know that is good. Okay. Another procedure that you can do, another advice that I can give to you is to read back the QNH when the controller tells you to descend 5,000 feet QNH 1010. Read back the QNH slowly because you want to make sure that the controller is able to spot your mistake if you are setting the wrong QNH. So if the controller tells me QNH 1010 and I say QNH 1000, it's really wrong because the air traffic controller can have problems on identifying your mistake. But if you read back slowly, and you say QNH 1000, for the control it's a lot easier to spot your mistake. Another thing that you can do in order to mitigate the threats is to listen actively to the frequency. What I normally do, even though I'm flying already altitudes and I'm close to the ground flying around the airport, I always listen to the other transmissions of the other aircraft getting the same clearance to an altitude. And when they receive the QNH from the air traffic controller, I cross check that the, my QNH is similar. Well, similar, it's actually the same, okay? And if it's not the same, I challenge the air traffic controller and ask for clarification. Hey, Radar Papa Lima, Charlie 001, can you confirm the QNH, please? Of course, QNH 1000, sorry for that. Now that you understand what is the QNH brander error, why it is so important that you set the right QNH when you fly altitudes, and why it is extremely important to set the right QNH when you're flying a non-precision approach into IMC condition, let's go and check what happened to the Norwegian Air Sweden crew from Stockholm to Paris Charles de Gaulle where they end up performing a go around and clear the terrain just six feet above the ground, which is six feet 1.8 meters. So without further ado, let's dive into it.
All right, everyone, let's jump into the aviation safety.net website where we can actually read the report of the Norwegian A Sweden flight from Stockholm to Paris de Gaulle, and we will understand how the pilots end up just performing the go round and actually climb away from the ground just six feet above the ground, approximately one nautical miles before the runway threshold. Six feet, just to give you a perspective, is approximately two meters, one meter point eight. So they were very close to the ground they were very very close to actually crash the aircraft what i want to make sure that you understand is the importance of the q and h planner error because the pilot they flew a non-precision approach into imc conditions without any visual references and they didn't have any wrong indications on the flight deck so the pilots were actually thinking that they were perfectly on profile but they were actually below the profile and we will understand what happened in this incident so without further ado let's go the aircraft of the day 23rd of may 2022 was an airbus a320 okay there were 178 people on board and what happened was actually they were good enough the pilot to perform the go round and just save all the people but what i want to make sure is that because of this qnh blunder error they end up being only 1.8 meters from the ground okay and they were good enough to perform a go round and save all people's life so let's read through the reports the norwegian air sweden flight delta 8 4311 and Airbus A320 nearly struck the ground on approach on Paris Charles de Gaulle Airport in France when it descended to six feet above the ground level during a go round. So they initiated the go round and when they were doing the go round by the time they were actually climbing away, they went down to six feet over the ground. The flight was operated by the Air Hub Hardlines on behalf of Norwegian Air Sweden and had departing from Stockholm Arlanda Airport, Alfa Romeo November, bound to Paris Chardegol. Okay, that's really irrelevant. What is important to understand, guys, is that the flight was clear for an RMP approach to run 27 right. The lateral guidance in this RMP approach relied on the satellite, so on GNS positioning. However, guys, and this is crucial, the vertical guidance was based on aircraft barometric altitude. That is what it is important to understand because the difference between an ELS that is based on the glide drop, so it doesn't carry a fixed but is a fit, fixed path, so it doesn't care if your QNH is wrong. Once you are into this glide slope, it just tells you that you are on the correct path. However, on a non precision approach, like in this case the RMP approach, the vertical guidance was based on aircraft barometric altitude. So if you have the wrong information with your altimeter, you're gonna fly the wrong vertical path, okay. During the descent, the air traffic controller at Chardegol twice report the QNH altimeter pressure to be 1011 instead of 1001 hectopascal. So as you can see, this was not a mistake from the pilot. The controller actually reported to the pilot the wrong QNH, all right? That's why it's so important, as we said already in the video, that during the pre-flight preparation, do your descent briefing, you cross-check the QNH that you can expect at destination, because if you know which QNH you can expect at your destination, if you see that the air traffic controller is going to give you a 10 hectopascal of difference, in this case was 1011 to 1001, you could challenge the controller and ask for clarification, okay? The controller also report this incorrect setting to an EasyJet flight, but the crew read back the correct value, 1001. So in this case, most probably the EasyJet were aware of the possible QNH that was in charge of the goal. And when they been reported with 1011 hectopascal, the EasyJet report 1001. The air traffic controller later gave instruction to an Air France flight in France with the correct QNH, 1001. The flight crew was subsequently clear to land by the tower controller while descending around 280 feet below the descent profile. So guys, the problem here is also that in the frequency there was multiple languages, so they were speaking French and English. So as we said during the video, it is important to 
actively monitor the ATC frequency in order to spot any QNH blunder errors. However, if the controller speaks also French, you don't speak French, in this case, it would have been very difficult to spot the mistake. And that's most probably what happened to the guys, okay? Then the flight crew was cleared to land by the tower controller while descending around 280 feet below the descent profile. What I want to make sure you understand here is that they, the flight crew was not aware about this difference in uh, in the path, okay? They were not aware that they were 280 feet below the profile because they were using a different pressure reference they thought they were on profile. And 280 feet is the difference in uh, feet that you can get if you set 10 hectopascal of difference on your pressure reference in the altimeter. The ground minimum safe altitude warning was then triggered and the controller radiated the crew. So the controller have, they have actually a system, I'm not very familiar with this system, but the air traffic controller, they have a system that I warned them, if the any traffic is getting too close to the ground and they are in a position they were, that they are not supposed to be, okay? The crew stated they did not hear this radio communication. However, the crew initiated a go around because what is important guys to remember, that's the first sign that you get in case you said the wrong QNH is the EGPWS. So you will start to hear this terrain calls before uh, ahead of time, okay, the 2,500 feet call or the terrain warning and terrain caution. So you're going to get these calls because the EGPWS is based on the radio waves and not barometric. So the, the radio altimeter actually senses that the terrain below the aircraft by sending radio waves and thus it feels any way that the terrain is below you okay so the minimum radio altimeter eight was recorded at six feet above the ground at 0 0.8 nautical miles from the runway threshold okay so they were approximately two meters so like the height of a normal person 1.8 meters okay over the ground at 0 0.8 nautical miles from the runway threshold so as you can see it's a quite serious situation the crew could not see puppies and runway light since the tower had forgotten to switch on runway approach lights so as you can see in here the problem was a QNH blunder error. The guys were in IMC, so they didn't have visual references. On top of that, the controller, according to, the, to this report, forgot to switch the running approach lights. So as you can see, there are multiple errors here that combine made the situation quite serious. Okay, tower subsequently switched on the approach lights after the plane go around. Okay, the second approach was flown based on the same uh, QNH, again resulting in the terrain warning by ATC, but this time the flight crew were able to see their puppies, corrected the flight path on final and then landed without further incident. All right, guys. So then we have the weather report, which was basically an EMC weather, okay, even though the visibility was 10 kilometers, okay, the guys were actually, I think from my point of, from what I know is that the day was quite bad. As you can see, we have shower, rain, CB, so for sure the guys were flying into IMC with some rain, most probably some turbulence, it was quite a, quite a big, busy day, okay. For sure, the fact that the weather was bad and they were very busy had uh, had, had something to do with the, the mistake because in a clear cavalcade day, it's a lot easier to spot the mistakes, okay? But when you are busy, you are in turbulence, you are in heavy uh, rain, you are in, in, I don't know if night or day, but we can check in MC. So it's a lot of things together, okay, combined. And then on top, the air traffic controller first report the wrong QNH, they forgot to switch on the light. So as you can see, there are multiple factors, okay? In here, in this graph, you can see the is the, the the light blue line okay is the altitude that was displayed to the crew by altimeter and the dashed line is actually the, the correct profile so as you can see the, the the indication that the pilot's head was correct however this the dark blue is actually the path that the guys were flying okay so as you can see the where the indicated altitude was higher than the real altitude and when they initiate the go around, they, they saw the altimeter, thought they were here, the MDA, for example, but however, they were just on the ground. And as you can see, that's the runway threshold. So they were very close. They've flown up perfect three degrees, but 280 feet below the ideal one. That end up to be 
basically over the threshold, but the run was 0 0.8 nautical miles away. And this is just a mistake that was done by setting the wrong QNH. That, that's why it is important to follow the SOPs that we talk about, okay, to follow the, the advice that we talk about, okay. But then, of course, this is just a video, follow the SOPs of your company. Okay, guys, I hope you understand a bit better what is the QNH planner error and how important it is to set the right QNH, okay. I hope you understand a bit better what are the consequences if you don't follow the right procedure just when especially flying a non-precision approach into IMC because you don't have visual references. Once you have a visual reference, guys, it's quite straightforward because if the guys had visual reference, they could see the puppy, the runway, they could spot straight away by just looking outside the window that something was wrong. However, in IMC, sometimes you don't see anything. So you're just basing your profile on your altimeter, on your track miles, and you're just flying the aircraft really following the instrumentation. That's why when you fly, Flying. I'm seeing non precision is very important to set the right QNH and follow the SOPs. If you have any questions, guys, leave a comment below and I'll help you out. I wish you a great day and I'll see you on the next one. Check. We can set to 70, please.